on to topic 13, which is the Bible. And our main premise here is that we should gladly hear, learn, and meditate on God's Word. God's Word is pretty amazing. It was written over 2,500 years from when Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, called the Pentateuch, all the way to when John, an evangelist, because he wrote one of the Gospels, and also an apostle, one sent by Jesus, wrote the book of Revelation. 2,500 years. And yet it enjoys a remarkable unity. The message is the same from cover to cover. Now the Bible was written in three languages. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew uh, and also Aramaic. The New Testament in Greek. In fact, they call it Koine or Common Greek because it was a sort of Greek that you would hear people speak on the streets. It was the ordinary person's Greek. And the way I remember how many books are in the Bible is I always think, okay, old has three letters in it, O-L-D, Testament has nine. You put the three and the nine together and you have 39 books. There are 39 books in the Old Testament. New, N has three letters, Testament has nine. But let's put a cross, a, multiplica a multiplication sign in there, and three times nine, or 27 books in the New Testament. 27 in the New, 39 in the Old, 66 total books. Now it's a phenomenal piece of literature and could be studied on that level and certainly very talented and gifted individuals wrote the Bible. But also the Bible was written by ordinary people because you see we believe two things about the Bible. In fact, they're things that the Bible teaches about itself. First of all, it certainly is a human writing. Uh, Mark, which is the gospel that Peter dictated to Mark, Mark is certainly uh, written in a, in a much rougher, more immediate style than the Gospel of John. So the writings reflect the human authors. It's a human writing, but these people were inspired by the Word of God. So the Bible is also a divine writing. It's the very Word of God. Now, why do you suppose God gave us the Bible? I guess that we could... Uh, figure out God from the things of nature, but we've talked about that. I've talked about that a number of times at Holy Cross. And the problem with figuring God out from nature is that uh, depending on where you live and what is going on, he's either a harsh God, he's a warm, sunny God. Uh, you know, bad things happen in life, good things happen in life. What do they mean? Now, if I were to ask you, what are you all about? Well, you would begin to tell me. You would speak to me. You would communicate with me. And that's what the Bible does. The Bible is God's love letter to us. He's telling us who we are. He's telling us who he is. And uh, he's focusing it all on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus challenges some people. He says, you search the scriptures because you think you find eternal life in them, but they testify about me, Jesus Christ, the main message of the Bible. Now, it's any piece of literature, we ought to take it at its own claims or, or what it says about itself. And here's what the Bible says. In fact, if we go to the New Testament, to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we look at the claim that the Bible makes upon itself, uh, we read these words. Paul says, from childhood, you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, that is, with the Bible. You have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Ah, there's the main message. Wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. We expect the Bible to point us to Jesus. And then it goes on and it says this, All Scripture, the Bible, all Scripture is breathed out by God. Literally, it means it is inspired by God. God has breathed into those writers His very life. And the words that they speak now, even though they use their expressions and their humanness, they are God's Word. 
So we can make the claim that the Bible is without error because God is without error. So we know the Bible points to Jesus Christ. We know that the Bible is uh, without error because God has inspired or breathed into it. And we go on. It says a couple other things. It says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable. Profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God, that means the person of God, the person who belongs to God, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Bible equips you to live for God. If I want to know, gee, what does God say to my life? I can find something in here that will give me insight. If I want to know, how do I live as a Christian? This Bible will also share with me uh, counsel, commandments by God, but again, most importantly, this Bible points to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what is um, the proper or improper way for our minds to explore the Bible? If I use my mind to tell the Bible what it's all about, in other words, there's a passage in here that says um, you shouldn't, um, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't share the marriage bed. In other words, you shouldn't sleep with someone outside of marriage. And I look at that and I say, ha, that was written back in the first century. Man, these are the 2000s. Let's get with it. I'm using my mind to shape what the Bible should say. In other words, I'm trying to conform the Bible to my way of thinking or of modern times. That's an improper use of the mind in terms of understanding the Bible. Instead, the Bible says some hard things to me, some things that kind of rub up even against our culture, that bang up against it. And here I have to say, wow, you know, I may really love that gal, or, and uh, I may really believe that it's right even though we're married, but no, you know what? God's Word is going to shape my mind, my heart, and my behavior. We don't use our minds to challenge or to reshape the Bible Instead, we use our minds to understand the Bible. And finally, I want to just give you a few good strategies for reading the Bible um, good, and, and learning more about, about what the Bible has to say. There is no substitute for reading it. Read it. Make a commitment. Uh, maybe you'll read two verses a day. Maybe you'll read a chapter a day. Uh, maybe you'll read a page a day. But whatever it is, make a commitment to read the Bible. Set some time aside. Let God speak to you. I've taught over the years that um, a, a nice plan is what I call PBS. Uh, I always remember it, uh, Public Broadcasting Station, all right? PBS. It, makes, it helps me to remember it. The P stands for paraphrase. When I read a passage of the Bible, try to say it in my own words, paraphrase. The B stands for bridge. What did it say then and there? In other words, in those days. Now, how do I bridge that to how it speaks to my life today? How does it apply to my life today? And then the S stands for strategy. What strategy, what plan of action am I going to adopt uh, to help integrate this biblical truth into my everyday uh, living? The final thing is, I would encourage you as you read the Bible, uh, this is something I love, take one of the Gospels. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels that tell about the life of Jesus. Take one of those and learn it really well. Make it your own. So that if, if someone asks you something, say it was the Gospel of Luke, and they ask you something, you would know right where to find that. And I'll tell you what will happen as you read about the life of Jesus as you hear what he has to say and see the miracles that he, he performs, as you see how he interacts with people, as you watch him as he ministers all the way to when he goes to Calvary's cross to die for us, and then to Easter Sunday morning when he rises for us, that will shape your heart and your life. Take one of the Gospels. My favorite is John. It has a lot of the words of Jesus. All the I am. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am also this last year studied Luke a little bit, so I've become a little bit more of a fan of that. 
Well, I, I should say I'm a fan of all of them. Mark is Peter's gospel, a little more rock'em, sock'em. The gospel of Matthew uh, points back to the Old Testament. Matthew was a Jew. So all of them are good, but take one of them and attempt to master it for yourself. That's our lesson for today on the Bible. We should gladly hear, learn, and meditate on God's Word. And that's our closing prayer. Dear Lord, help us to meditate upon that Word. May your Word be what the Bible calls it in Psalm 119, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. May it point us to Jesus and then show us and give us power to live as disciples of Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.